And I now call the final speaker in open debate, Stephen Kerr, around four minutes, please. Uh, Presiding officer, thank you. I refer the Chamber to my register of interest as a trustee of a charity, Freedom Declared Foundation, which aims to promote freedom of religion or belief within the United Kingdom. And I'd also refer the Chamber to my membership of my church. I don't believe that we talk enough in this country about Article 18 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which is about freedom of religion or belief, because I think we're quite inclined to be a bit smug about this particular article. We think issues about freedom of religion or belief are confined to other places, other countries, other continents. It's some other people's issue, but not an issue that we have to deal with in Scotland or the wider UK. Here's what Article 18 actually says. Everyone has a right to freedom of thought, conscience and religion. This right includes freedom to change his religion or belief and freedom either alone or in community with others and in public or private to manifest his religion or belief in teaching, practice, worship and observance. So unusually, in a debate such as this in the Scottish Parliament, I want to speak about another member of this parliament, someone who earlier this year tested the waters of freedom of religion or belief in Scotland. Now, I've always admired Kate Forbes because she's willing to speak publicly about her Christian faith. And when she ran for the leadership of the SNP earlier this year, she spoke truthfully about her beliefs and her values. And what followed, we all witnessed, the fragility beneath that consensus that we would all like to think exists in this country about freedom of religion or belief. It's not often a Tory would reference a nationalist in a socialist publication. But the Christmas issue of the New Statesman contains an article based on an interview that has been conducted by a writer, Jason Cowley, with Kate Forbes. He references the first few hours and days of Kate Forbes' leadership campaign. I'm going to quote the article. It's worthy of being quoted, I believe. Quote, but the immediate focus of attention was on her religious and personal beliefs. She answered questions about equal marriage she would have voted against. Premarital sex, she was opposed. Trans rights, quote, a trans woman is a biological male who identifies as a woman, unquote. And the Scottish Gender Recognition Reform Bill. She would not seek to challenge the decision by the Sunak government to block it as directly and honestly as she could. What followed, I'm continuing to quote, what followed was a public shaming. Forbes was denounced and abused on social media. Senior SNP politicians, notably those closest to Sturgeon, such as John Swinney, a former party leader and the then Deputy First Minister, said that Forbes's views disqualified her from leading a modern political party. Quote, love is love, unquote, tweeted Stephen Flynn, the leader of the SNP at Westminster. A Times columnist. Of course. You're Rona Mackay. I, I, I will pick up the quote, but I'm happy to give Thank late. you for taking Rona the intervention. Mackay. I'm struggling to understand the relevance of what you're doing to the motion put forward by my colleague. I'm sorry. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's bizarre, frankly. Thank you, Ms Mackay. The, the matter of relevance is a, is a matter for the Chair. Um, I don't think anything that Mr Kerr has said is not in keeping with the broader um, concept of, of, of human rights, as he explained at the outset. And I invite Stephen Kerr to continue, but to begin the process of concluding. Mr Kerr. OK. Um, I'm going to conclude. I, I'm grateful for your ruling. Uh, no, sir. Actually, what, what's bizarre is that the member can't understand what Article 18's implication is in relation to the experienced, I would say, the ordeal that the party the member belongs to put Kate Forbes through. Quote, I can tell you the quote. A Times columnist mocked her as a candidate for the 19th century and the ultra-liberal Scottish Greens, who had entered a power-sharing arrangement with the Sturgeon government after signing the BS agreement in August 2021, said they, withdraw, they would withdraw support for the SNP if Forbes became First Minister. The reason I... Re that's the end of that quote. And the reason I read that, and I will conclude, 
is that while we pride ourselves on legal safeguards for freedom of religion or belief, there is a complacency about what that right entails. It's not just about allowing people to demonstrate, practice, observe their religion in private and in public. It's about a degree of tolerance that we should have for one another on the basis of our religious beliefs and on the basis of our private opinions and our public opinions. And that, in this instance, was found wanting. And therefore, there is no room for complacency in respect to freedom of religion or belief in this chamber, in this country, uh, not just in the broader world. Thank you, Mr. Kim.